Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in 2010 Intel released their Clarkdale range of CPUs which just so happened to be the first processors to feature integrated graphics on the same chip. Up until this point users would rely on the graphics that featured on the motherboard if they didn't have a discrete GPU. For example the Intel GMA950 or Radeon 4200. Two such examples that are probably best left in the past as anyone who remembers trying to run games on these onboard graphics would likely remember the frustration of trying to squeeze more than 20 FPS out of any game. Although integrated graphics have never been seen as capable by the gaming community, they've definitely come a long way, both in terms of Intel's HD graphics and AMD's onboard Radeon series, and I've tested both in the past to find that you can definitely game at lower settings and resolutions. But just how capable were the first processor-based integrated graphics? Well, to find out, we've got our hands on the i5-661, a Clarkdale CPU that not only features Intel's first iteration of HD graphics, but the highest clocked GPU in the range at 900MHz. So let's see what this thing can do. I should mention that we've had to stick to older titles, because I went into this expecting a little too much. So first up it's Far Cry 2, a classic in the series with some fantastic looking environments. Uh, well, when not being played on these Intel HD graphics that is. We've had to turn things down to 800 by 600 here, and we're relying on the minimal settings to try and grant us playable frames, but we didn't exceed 30 FPS. Not too bad despite the very low resolution, but I wouldn't fancy playing the entirety of the game like this. Next up it's Fallout 3. This time we turn things up to 720p with the medium preset and after eventually getting this game to work we saw 33 FPS on average. This frame rate differed significantly depending on the area but it stuck around 30 for the most part when we were just generally walking around and exploring but you could expect a pretty significant frame dip when the action heated up. Crisis next at 720p, once again to achieve 27 frames per second, over half an hour of gameplay. Again we saw some significant freezes at times, but I'm quite surprised by this result, especially considering how we started off with Far Cry 2, which we had to drop to 800 by 600 Crisis here is on the low preset, and doesn't look too great I have to admit, but it's the only way that we were able to get it even near playable. Finally it's the turn of Bioshock Infinite, the newest game that we've tested today. We had to drop back down to 800 by 600 again here and even then we only saw 25 frames per second on average with the very low graphical preset. As before there were frame drops even dropping below 20 at times and I can't really see much benefit of using the first generation Intel HD graphics anymore unless it's just for everyday use. When it comes to gaming, pairing a card like the GTX 950 or RX 460 with this CPU would give you a great budget build, but as for the on-board GPU, well, it's hard to praise, and even less demanding and older games will struggle, but I think it has definitely been fun to take a look back at it, and I hope you've enjoyed the video too. So guys, there we have it. As always, I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like down below. If you didn't, be sure to leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.